Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. So just recently, Caden Live finally released the brand new version, Caden Live 19.04, back in April. After about three years of development, tons of redevelopment of the code, we finally have it. And I have just recently upgraded to the newest version, which is 19.04.1, which I do have right here. And today, I'm actually going to be doing a review of Caden Live, and I might be doing more reviews as I use this further. But I'm going to compare it to the versions before and mainly go over at least the things for me that I like and that I didn't like so much. Now, before I actually begin, if at all possible, uh, with any open source software, or even if it's not open source, if you feel like it's giving you a lot of value, which programs like Caden Live, developed by so many people that they have, I highly recommend that you donate. You know, come here, uh, donate to the KDE organization. And once you've donated, um, obviously you get a thank you, but not only that, you also get your message on a list. So if you click on the list, your donation will show up right there. Okay, so I do highly recommend that you uh, contribute to any of these open source projects. Now, there are a number of ways that you can actually upgrade. Okay, now if you are on Linux Mint like I am, uh, you have the first option is you could just go ahead and add this PPA. So you could go here, follow the instructions. And what this will allow you to do is once you go into your software manager and you install Kid and Life, you get the newest version um, if you install this uh, PP PPA. But honestly, the simplest way is just to go to your software manager and go to Flatpak. Okay, that's what I recommend. Um, it doesn't always get updated as quickly as through the PPA, but this is going to give you a lot better chance and you don't have to do this whole PPA thing, okay? So that's what I highly recommend. Just go into your software manager, install Kaden Live through the fat pack. So let's go ahead and talk about the new changes, uh, things that I liked, and then I'm going to go ahead and compare it to the older version, which I have here in a virtual machine. Uh, this version right here is actually version 17.12.3 so this is the older version so you know if you don't have the latest PPA on your software manager you get the old version so that's why I recommend using the flat pack okay so let's go ahead and go to this new version and right off the bat uh, things look a lot different so this is the new version you see how it's v2 v3 but it just looks different and then if you actually go to the older version this one's a lot simpler looking and this is going to be the whole theme of this comparison, really. Uh, simple versus more features, but at the same time, there's going to be an added level of complexity. Okay, so besides the visual look, other things you'll notice is if you actually go to the effects, there are a lot less effects. So if you go back to the older version, there are a ton of effects here. Now, the team did this because a lot of these effects, they didn't either work really well or uh, there were problems or maybe they were just not used a lot okay and so uh, that's why they did this but fortunately a lot of my favorite type of effects they are still here and the team has kept this other small things is like the visual representation for example now there's a little search right here but on the older version the search bar is right on top i find that's easier to use than having to go through this uh, two step of pressing this before you get the actual search box and then another thing down here is this little toolbar uh, you could have additional features here and I find this confusing um, because it's not as simple so if you go down here it's a lot easier in my opinion you know preview high quality none so that is a small thing but uh, I think it had to be mentioned and the reason why they did this is because they added some additional features and I'll go over that so Although I do like the fact that they have streamlined a few things, that is a pro. Uh, the bad thing about it is it does make things uh, a little bit more, I guess, complex in terms of like finding where stuff is, uh, having to choose more steps, you know. So uh, that's just one thing that I noticed. So now let's go ahead and get into our project and see how the new features actually affect your workflow. So the very first thing that happens is whenever you take your clip and you pull it down here, things just look different right away and so as you can see here there's your video but it automatically shows the audio portion as well 
And what you'll also notice is if you move it, it actually splits it. You see that? So depending on which video track, it'll also separate it, the audio as well. Um, and this is nice, but it also causes a lot of problems whenever you're using this. And I'm going to show you why uh, this actually causes issues. So let's go back and go down here. And you could also change the way in which this looks. For example, right now, it's set to split audio tracks. So here is the video, all the video tracks, and then here's all the audio tracks. And this is something that I like because this is how they had it before. So all your video tracks are grouped together, then all your audio tracks are grouped together accordingly. But you could also do something like this where it's mix audio tracks. And so this separates each video and audio by itself. So that does make it easier to manage. You know, whereas if it has this whole uh, split audio tracks, it could get confusing because now you have something like this. And I think whenever you, you know, run this for the first time, this new version, the default is this whole split view. And so I recommend the mixed audio tracks. But let me show you how this default split view can cause issues. And so here you have one. Now you add another video clip right here. And you see that? it starts getting really confusing okay and then I could add you know I could add more and you could kind of see what where I'm getting at okay so I highly recommend that you use this one the mix it just keeps things organized okay but there's other issues here um, so let's go ahead and go back to the old one so you could see the difference so that's nice we have this tracks automatically separated but if you actually start dropping in a whole bunch of different clips, right? So I like this version better. So if you drop in the clip, you see the audio right there. And if you actually wanted to split the audio from the video, it's really easy to, to do. You just go to clip and then you can split the audio and see. So you have something very similar to what you have in the new version by default. So that makes it a lot easier for you to have control and it keeps your timeline very clean and you'll notice how it just makes things a lot cleaner when you're adding a whole bunch of different clips instead of it automatically splitting everything now right now i am just learning how to use this so maybe there's a feature where i could change the default so if there is a way i could go back to the older version then i'll do that one of the best new features of this version is the actual preview area if you go here now you see these additional quick toggles. Whereas in the older version of Kaden Live, you don't have that. You normally have to right click so then you could see additional features or go down here somewhere. Now with this new version, you could do things such as like preview full screen. You could add overlays, different overlays, which is very handy. And for me, the most important new quick toggle is the ability to zoom in, zoom out. I know that doesn't sound like a big thing, but it helps whenever you have things like effects. So you are able to zoom in and zoom out very quickly without having to right click on your menu. And let's go ahead and zoom back in here. Now other things you could do here is you could actually add and remove keyframes right here. And these are all things that I feel just helps uh, whenever you are trying to quickly edit your videos. Um, and you actually want to quickly preview it in a variety of different ways. Okay, so let's say for example now that you actually wanted to add another video track because you've already filled up the three default. So typically you think this would be an easy thing to do. You just right click, add a track, and the default is usually going to be a video track. So let's go ahead and add that. So now I have a new video track and it's down here, V1. You can name it whatever you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and drag this video right down here. But I can't add it. It tells me that there's no available track for split operation. So that is a new thing because in the older version of Caden Live, if I right click, insert track, it's video track or audio track. So I say video and I dropped it down here, no problems. And that's where this whole usability thing comes in. Because now you actually have to think about, well, do 
do you also want to add the audio as well? So if you right click here, you add a track, there's two additional options. There's now AV track and also audio record track. So what you want to choose now is if your video is going to have audio, which most does, you're going to have to choose AV track. So let's go ahead and add that. Now if I try to add this video, it works now. So this adds another layer of complexity. And as you can see here, things can start getting really messy, especially if you have larger projects. So if you are going to add a new track, just remember that you're going to have to choose the AV track in order to get that on there. Now, there is also another option, which I really like, which I haven't seen on the previous one, and that is audio record track. This is awesome because now this allows you to do voiceovers. So if you click on this, you'll be able to record your audio over a video, which is a feature that I think a lot of people enjoy. And so if you right click on your mouse, there is an option for configure recording. This will allow you to do many things. You could choose different audio devices that you want to record from, but you could also choose screen grabs and also from Blackmagic as well, which is pretty sweet. But there are many other options that show up here. And these are options that you either have to dig through up here or they're not available here. So if you notice, you could click on things like miscellaneous, your project defaults, proxy clips, your timeline. So here, this is important. So you could actually separate your audio. You can see there, right and left channels. You can play around with these different options. And the option that I was looking for was to not split the audio, but so far I haven't been able to find that. You could actually reduce or remove the video thumbnails if you didn't want that or audio thumbnails. So there are many options here that you can choose. So the thing is, um, I'm not sure why this option is not available easily up here. Uh, they're all separated. And like I said, some of these things, they're not easily accessible up here. And at the same time, if you wanted to access these configure recording or these additional options, then you can only do that through these audio tracks. If you try to do that on video, the option is not there. So it's really odd. Uh, that they didn't have that down here for all the tracks. And it's also odd that they added so many important features through that very hidden menu. And so when it comes to tracks, uh, right now the way that it is set up by default, uh, I really don't like how this is set up. Uh, it gets really confusing. And then when you add things like different effects, multiple timelines, different groupings, it could just get super messy compared to the very easy to use streamlined way that they had it before. So that is probably one of the biggest issues that I had with this version. Uh, although the pro is it's nice if you actually like your audio to be separated, it does this automatically for you and it still groups it. So there's that. Now, other thing that I noticed and I haven't figured out how to solve this. Okay. So if you actually wanted to add a transition, normally there is an option to just use the default. So you would put your mouse over here, right? And uh, what happens is it would actually add a transition automatically. So, but the problem is, look at this, this transition goes throughout the whole video. So not a good thing. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to have this transition, you know, near the beginning. So let me show you how that differs from the previous way. So in the old version, if I actually just zoomed in really close and I want to add a transition. You just put your mouse over the video and see it adds it right there, right at the beginning. And it actually has this five second for you. So that is really awesome. That's actually what I wanted, you know, so it doesn't cover the whole video. So you have your faded transition right here by default. And also you can do that for any video clip. So if you were stringing clips together, it'll add, the, add this automatic fade or dissolve effect right away. And this makes your transitions look really good. And this applies to anything that you do on a new version. And so this is a bug uh, from the last time that I looked on the Kaden Live release notes. There is, is a bug and they know about it. And I think they're trying to fix it right now. So they will be adding additional features, but it says this is a bug fix for that problem, but it's still not fixed yet. And so hopefully they will fix this because this is a huge problem for me 
because every time I add a effect, you know, or a transition effect, I have to constantly and manually adjust it, uh, which is not what I want. And so hopefully in 19.04.2, this would be fixed. And uh, I thought it was fixed here, but at least from my experience right now, it, it's not fixed yet. So those are all the main issues that I had or the cons of this brand new version. And I know the team is uh, working on it right now. And I do applaud them for all the work that they have done. And so far, other things, I really haven't noticed too much of a difference. Uh, pretty much everything else is the same. Uh, but the one other thing that I noticed is performance. So the performance on this is not quite as good as how it was before. And uh, this is definitely due to the fact that this is a brand new version. And so it's going to take some time. Um, and right now I really want to go back to the older version. But I want to get used to this new one because this is where things are heading. And the k Live team is really working on making this more of a pro open source video editor. So those are all my initial thoughts and my review on k Live 19.04. Uh, as I work with this a lot further and really learn how to use this, then uh, I might make a following review part two or part three in the future. So if you actually had any thoughts on this brand new version of Caden Live or any of the previous versions, uh, please leave that in the comments area below. I'd like to know what you like, what you didn't like. And if you didn't want to see my entire Caden Live tutorial series, I will also leave the playlist in the description as well. So as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey geeks, if you are a creative geek like me and you wanted to learn how to create content on YouTube and other places on the internet, then check out my Go Content Creators Group where you'll get access to 30 videos plus additional content for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part of it is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the other side. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com and I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.